Hey there, this is uh, Inverse Room, John Lennon, uh, and I'm, I'm visiting my friend Trevor Pinch, who, is, uh, who has agreed to demonstrate his DIY modular synth for us. Trevor, by the way, you might know him as the author of uh, Analog Days, The History of the Analog Synthesizer, among other books, and uh, he's also a professor of science and technology studies at Cornell University, and uh, a musician. And uh, I saw him perform with this thing the other night and thought it would be good to have a... Uh, uh, a video that uh, demonstrated it. Right. So, so I built this synth in 1973 in London, played it out for a couple of years, packed it up, it got destroyed in a move here to the States, and I've been rebuilding it over the last nine months. And it's been an insane pro project. And I get one thing working and something else will burn out. But a good bit of it's working. Just listen, just listen to the sound of the moment. There's a joystick. Do is I'll show how the patching works. I'll build something up and show you what the modules are, John. Great. Um, it's got, and the, the oscilloscope may or may not work. I've already unplugged it. Um, okay, so this is the patch bay over here. English style plugs. We used to call these banana plugs, but they're smaller than the American ones. They, I think they called them in England wonder plugs, circa 1973. It was originally built actually with uh, for stereo sound, but I've only got one channel wired up at the moment. So this is the first oscillator here. <laughs> Triangle. It's got three frequency ranges. High, oh. mid, low. Triangle. Supposedly sine, but by the way, this is nothing like a sine. I like these in between <laughs> waypoints. And this is the coolest one for me. This is called Mark Space. This sort of changes the height. Basically, the pulse will right. change it. Turn, turn it down and then tell me what it is. Mark space, so. Pulse, like it, pulse, the pulse will grow, basically. To I like that sound. Yeah. Okay, so that's got three frequencies. There's a second oscillator. It's got four frequency ranges on it. It's got triangle, square, triangle. Sign a ramp that doesn't work and a pulse. Ah. But this is the this is the thing that's my pride and joy of this beast. This is a, a six-step sequencer. So you can use it as an oscillator. How do you program the steps? For these knobs here, it's, you can do see this one? So let's um let's put it as a source of voltage control through the first oscillator and you'll get to hear what it does. Um out let's do it this one. So it's coming out here. Now we start the program. Each one of these is a different note in effect. Right. Put this through the filter. The filter is only half working. Um, it's band pass at the moment. It's a voltage control filter. Let's um, come out here. Let's see.
uh, frequency range so we can get different sounds. Trevor, how about the joystick? What uh, parameters does it control? It controls X and Y, so you can have two voltages out, an X voltage this direction, a Y voltage up there. And you can uh, patch whatever voltage is through it that you want? Yeah, yeah, you patch it, the voltages out can be the input sense, so it can control the voltage control filter, the oscillators with it. And this was the hardest thing to rebuild after it got beat up when it uh, shipped over from uh, Britain to the States. Um, I actually have it, so you can detach it for, you know, Oh, yeah. for live performance, taking it on the road, you detach this little bit there. Um, but getting it rebuilt and bouncing it was a pain in the neck. It's, you can just, if you see in there, basically it's, it's mounted on two potentiometers, and there's a third potentiometer that goes up there for doing this direction, and one of the two on this way gives it the uh, Y component. Why don't you turn the sound down and you can, uh, I'll uh, yeah. show people the Turn the sound down. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, the power supply was built for Britain, 240 volts. I tried getting it working with the power, you know, it's got these big power transistors here. And uh, I've had so many shocks of 240 volts in my life. After once trying to get this thing to work, I said, forget it. I'm, I'm going to get, uh, I went online and got a, that uh, power source built that will now do input of 240 from Britain and the American. Here on the floor, you mean? 120, that, that box there. Um, so the power supply is not, I'm using that rather than the, so these giant capacitors I'm, and transformer I'm, not long, I'm no longer using, thank God. you got to leave them there because they look so cool. Yeah, though. they do look cool. Um, and it's built on um, a circuit board called a breadboard, let me just get you one from over here, called uh, Electro Kit, which is a British design. So you build your breadboard, it's got a few ICs in it by the way, uses um, 741 op amps as well, a bunch of ICs. Okay, so we're rolling again. Yeah, so I was living in this house in Muswell Hill, London, with a couple of guys, one who built speakers, a guy called Steve Maxwell, a guy called Roger Lindsay, who really knew about circuits, and he told me use electro kit, and that was a great idea, because you just, you know, can wire them all up like that, take it out, and frig around on the top here, which is a lot easier to do than if you're inside there. These ones uh, are inside, and they're much harder to mess with. I have to take them all out, and they, um, but this is just great. Just unplug it, um, plug it back in. So before we wrap up, why don't you show, uh, show us the schematics that you built it from? Yeah, it's got a great reverb, spring reverb unit. We were hearing that at the beginning. These are, this is from Wireless World, uh, 19, August 1973. Um, one of the main designs was a guy called Tim Orr, who I actually met, another guy, D.W. Thomas. They're really faded. Um, I, I, my eyesight is going, and uh, there you just see some of the schematics. Um, it's got also on it a noise sources. We haven't played those. It's got a, a, a um, exponential converter, which I never use because the keyboard, I don't want to use a conventional keyboard at all. That's not my aesthetic. I like to keep it raw and rough, basically. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, sample and hold it's got, which I never got working properly. It, it's got um, a envelope shaper, which is not yet working, but which I will get working, which yeah. is a, a lot of fun, of course. Great. Well, it sounds terrific, and uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, you're uh, welcome.